Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Side Splitters. My name is Lyle. And I, good people, am Andy. And our goal tonight is to leave you in stitches finally back after so long. <laughs> oh, man. It should should not have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. I don't know what the hell that bunny was talking about. <laughs> I think you made that joke before, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's still relevant. Is it, are, are our fan base uh, good enough to recognize callbacks, or... Has it been long enough that we have new enough fans that we could start recycling jokes? I'm, I'm thinking the new enough fans thing. We could totally start recycling. <laughs> nice. No one has to know about uh, Chuck E. Cheese ever. Yay. No, never, never. Don't even have to ever mention it again. <laughs> so wow. that wasn't the reason why we were gone for too long. <laughs> it had nothing to do no. with Chuck E. Cheese. Sorry, guys. We still didn't do the thing that Andy promised you guys. Uh, Andy, by the way, promised you guys, not me. Um... Oh, yeah, nice to make that distinction. Well, hey, look, <laughs> the episode's there. <laughs> <laughs> Proof is in the podcast, my good man. Um, now, we were gone for a little while because I was going through some moving. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and if anybody knows just how much Lyle, like, okay, first of all, like, you know, the guy went on a diet, so I should tell you one thing. Second of all, uh, you know, just to give you a general idea of how long it takes for him to move, we finally got our answer. <laughs> I totally was like, where the fuck is he going with this? <laughs> where? I get the diet thing. All right, he's he's got a fat joke coming. Yep. I did not expecting I did not expect uh, you know, this is how long it takes him to move because he's so fat. I don't know why. I just wasn't distinguished yet. <laughs> You're welcome. So that's out of the way now. Hooray, I moved. I'm I'm, you know, very comfortable in a new place and, and got my new desk and new chair and all that set up and soon to possibly be new microphones for the wonderful podcast that I do. We'll see, maybe, possibly, I don't know. Yeah, that just means that you'll sound better and I'll still sound like crap. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> your words. So um that's probably all you're gonna get out of us uh for at least the next hour or so because the rest of the episode Okay, we will do a clickbait news this episode. Uh and that'll be after we get done jerking each other off with all the video game news that we have for each other oh, because God, yes. E three happened, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't know if you realize or not, but me and Andy like video games, so I'm gonna tell you right now, if you don't want to hear video games, I'm sorry it's been like two or three weeks since we did an episode. Go and listen to the deck episode again or something because we're you're gonna have to hold out for another week because that's what we're talking about this episode. This is the E three episode. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, E three is gamer Christmas, and I'll be damned if I'm not gonna be excited about what I opened on Christmas. Damn right. <laughs> So, with that being said, uh, you could fast forward if you want, <laughs> because, like I said, we are going to do clickbait news. That's not going to be gamer related at all. It's going to be typical old clickbait news. There's even a Florida story in there, so there's that. Oh, thankfully you got a Florida story there's, in there. Cause there's, there's, we... Go ahead. There's not only a Florida story, but there's also a story that I found. It was like I don't know how old it is, but it's within since before the decasode. I think it was like right before the decasode. I found it. So I was just like, oh, I'm saving this for episode 41, not realizing 41 was coming so much later yeah. on down the road. Uh, yeah, right. So, But I kept it this whole time, and I'm like, I still have to tell this one. It is that good. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely try to stick around. Like I said, if not, fast forward, because we got a doozy of clickbait news coming up. Um, but with that all out of the way, I have already spent way more time on that segment than I wanted to because I am chomping at the bit to talk about E3. So am I. Okay, so where do we even start? Uh, do we want to do this uh, in order of appearance from conferences, or do you want to just like dive into our most exciting stories and then kind of trickle down to the – you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. I'll start with this. Uh, we'll, we'll start with your exciting things because – I I have a lot of a little bit to talk about. Um, <laughs> so, for you, what did you take away from E3 that has you the most excited? A uh, couple games. Um, yeah, but what, the is one... the, what is the one thing? doesn't have to be a game. doesn't have to be anything specific. What is the one thing that happened during E3 that is incredible for you? Uh, original Xbox games backwards compatible on the one. You don't have much to look forward to, do you? Um, uh, 
Well, I mean, I could go over the new games that look good, but to be honest with you, when you open up that much nostalgia, you know, in one shot, like, I'm, I'm a little worried about what pricing is going to be like. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, like, there were some good gems on the original Xbox that I just don't have access to play anymore. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't <laughs> have... <laughs> fresco, fresco and Fresco, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh... Oh my god. So, the, uh, like, I don't have an original Xbox system anymore, and I don't do the emulators because my laptop's a piece of shit. So, uh, you know, I don't. That's a, that's a whole generation that's closed off to me right now. So, the idea that they're opening it back up on Xbox One, even if it's a limited, like, library, I don't even care. Like, that's exciting for me. Sure. Um, that's kind of weird that you're that obsessed with nostalgia. I mean, geez, let things go, buddy. Oh my god. Look. Hips, hipsterism is is in vogue. <laughs> so that's that's it. You are feeling that excited about some old games on new platforms. Oh yeah. Also, like pre E three, but like you know, Pokemon uh, Gold and Silver going on the virtual console. I'm excited about that. Again, old games on new platforms. Hey, there are new games that are excite me as well, dude. I'm just saying. You gotta have you gotta have more more excitement in your life, Andy. Like take my thing from E3. Ah, uh, all right. Okay, let's let's all take your thing from E3. Just try to keep your thing out of my ear. It's not gonna be easy, Andy. They they announced two Metroid games, Andy. I know. <laughs> and I, I am know. talking all this shit because I am so excited. And the one thing that I'm taking away from E3 that I cannot wait. I am literally going to rub the package against my face, is the remake for Metroid 2. Yes, I am that excited about a remade game on a new console. God, well, I can't I, I wait. Would, <laughs> I wouldn't make out with a box it comes in. Like, that's a little extreme, don't you think, buddy? Can you take all them years of warning and warning and warning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I make God. your head blow off? Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that's I, I I totally hear where you're coming from with the Xbox thing. That's that's cool as shit that they're actually doing that. Kind of kind of weird that it took this long. So is it the the um is it gonna be something that you have to like download or is it like just the old games are gonna work? Um, so the 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 way they said it is that it's gonna be part of a digital library. Like you have to download it. Uh, they said that they're working on the ability to have the system read the disc and be able to like install it that way. Uh, but they said it'd be trickier on the original Xbox disc because it's a much different disc format than, right. you know, 360. So it's going to be trickier. But they said that that's one of the possibilities that they're looking into, which I'm I'm all for. I still have a couple Xbox games around here somewhere. I just don't have anything to play them on. Right. So do we have an idea of an ETA for that? Like, when is that actually happening? Um. They said that it was going to happen uh, probably sometime this holiday season uh, is when they're first going to do it, and they did mention specifically that Crimson Skies was going to be one of the backwards titles, which is like one of the most requested original Xbox titles for people. I had never played it, so yeah. I don't really have that kind of attachment to it. I've never played it either. Wasn't wasn't Fable for the original Xbox? Yes. I played it for PC, so... but. <sighs> Come on, people. <laughs> what are you so excited yeah. about? Get, get Fable. Stop being bad. <laughs> and I also liked Conquer Live and Reloaded, the remaster. All right, I have a confession to make. <laughs> uh -huh. I've never played any of the Conquer games. Oh, holy shit, man. You've got to get on that. I know. Shame on me, especially because uh, with Diddy Kong Racing, I was... I main Conquer. I like Conquer. That was like my favorite character for some reason. I just was all about the squirrel. I was like, yeah, this squirrel's cool as hell. They should give it its own game because I wasn't sure if it was a boy or a girl at the time. Oh. Uh, while we're being honest, I'm still not really sure. But anyway. <laughs> boy. Okay. Uh, I'll pop that mystery bubble right now. It's a boy. <laughs> so then once they gave it its own game, I was just like, oh, that's cool. I should get it some time. And I just never did. I don't know. But, um, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's cool. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna transport you here a little bit here. I, I kind of already blew my load all over the table, but I got a second one coming. <laughs> um, I would love to talk E3 with you for this entire podcast. Unfortunately, 
the entire podcast with E3 is going to be your doing. What I took from E3 is, my God, Nintendo has some shit lined up for us. And I am in the early 90s again because I am the biggest Nintendo fanboy ever again right now. Like, <laughs> I yeah. am so damn excited for what Nintendo has coming down the line for us. Like, And I don't even know why. I just, it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, I and I, I kind of feel you on that one too because honestly between all the conferences and everything like that um, if I were to give like a winner like for me I think Nintendo kind of took the show they, they didn't okay so I texted Andy the other day and I was telling him uh, about an, uh, uh, the new episode could be this week you know I'm all, I'm all moved in I'm ready to go and all that and uh, at the time, Andy hadn't caught Nintendo's conference yet, so he had to catch up. He did now catch up, but here's what I said to him when he told me he didn't catch it and, and asked me if I was all moved in and everything. Uh, I said, Nintendo fucking laid its dick out and said, pay me for a lick, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the funnier part about that is that I was in my car when you sent that text, so I let the text-to-speech <laughs> voice play it in, in my car and having it say <laughs> pay me for a lick bitches over the speaker was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> but I mean just my god they were just like what's up guys um so before we even start we're going to tell you that we are making a main game for Pokemon for the Switch please stop giving us death threats <laughs> yeah right and then they're like, all right, now let's show you all the cool stuff. What? <laughs> that wasn't it? Because you could have stopped it right there and I would have been satisfied. Uh, then they started showing us they have a new Kirby game coming out that looks a lot like the older Kirby games. I'm kind of excited about that. They have... Uh, God, I'm trying to think of what else they showed. Oh, Super, they showed us more Super Mario Odyssey. They showed... Um, Earlier in the com in, in in the the whole thing, they showed us uh, 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 Rocket League is coming to the Switch. They showed us uh, the the Mario game. What the hell is it called? Mario Odyssey. Not Mario Odyssey. I already said that. The the Mario oh. and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Which is not a pair I would have put together, but Dan doesn't I mean, look cool. <laughs> the, the the humor is there, and it honestly looks like a, a lot like uh, XCOM. XCOM. Yep. Which I haven't played yet, and and I've been kind of wanting to play it lately. Uh, a buddy of mine was telling me about it, and I was just like, damn, this this kind of sounds like something I'd be interested in. And I've been wanting to get around to it, but just haven't been able to, obviously, because of movie and all that. Yeah. So now I can just be like, you know what? I don't need to. I'm going to wait for this game to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they announced that. All that is good and great. I don't know if I ever expressed my feelings for... Um, Metroid Prime on this podcast. If you I have, have okay, I, I was going to say because I'm not going to now because I am just too high on Metroid right now to even slightly talk smack about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the Metroid Prime series though. So when I seen the dark screen when they're just showing off all these different trailers, they show dark screen. They show a couple stars. And now it's obviously some sort of outer space game, and then they show clouds kind of forming into something and I see it slightly turning into an S I, I just was like I have to walk away from normal people right now because I'm about to lose my shit so <laughs> I, I was at work I, I excused my I didn't even say anything I just got up and walked away from the lunch table because one of my coworkers was on the phone I was just like I have to get away from these people right now because I might actually scream <laughs> <laughs> because I knew what it was about to be and sure enough that S Formed, it was the screw attack symbol for Metroid, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's here! And then a big old four slaps down on the screen, and I'm just like, oh, this is the sequel to Super Metroid, because Super Metroid was Metroid 3. And then they show Prime, and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> what do you mean, Prime? <laughs> uh, you know, and yeah, you, you probably are the only person I can think of that would, that would sigh at that. That you can think of, yes, that's fine, but I am not the only person... I went to Reddit for clarification, and it is in fact true. But before I got to Reddit, I was kind of feeling, I was kind of feeling like I had my dick in someone's mouth, and they just punched me in the gut because while I was so ecstatic about what Nintendo was doing, they finally dropped this series and they bring it back, and they're like, "Hey, it's Metroid, it's coming back, and it's in the way that you hate it." And I'm like, "Damn it!" <laughs> So, uh... Well, it, it could have been worse. They could have announced Metroid, oh, the other M. You know what? <laughs> Hate all you want. 
I don't care. I like the other end more than Prime. Yeah, Samus should never ask permission to use her missiles. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> the okay, the story of Other M was ridiculous. Absolutely, it was it was kind of slow and and you know it just it sucked. I'm not going to do this whole thing, but I will say this much: the gameplay of Other M, it was there. You know, if if you take the story out and just button mash through the dialogue like I did, uh, it's fine. <laughs> you know, the game is fine all of a sudden. Um, there was a couple things I had issues with, but altogether, not bad. You know, if it was anything that wasn't called Metroid, I probably would have never played it. But because it was Metroid, I had to at least try it. All that being said, I am reconsidering going back and playing all the Metroid Primes. Uh, I'm probably going to, because I want to go through all of them, come hell or high water, I have to finish them, see what the hoopla is about, because I never even finished one of them. Like, Metroid Prime 1, it was the first Metroid, Metroid game we got since Super. And I was just like, I have to play this. I have a GameCube. They didn't make one for the Nintendo 64, and that sucked. I thought the series was dead. They come back, they show this. This is one of those awesome new first-person shooters that everyone's going nuts about since GoldenEye. I'm getting this. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so I got it, and I was playing it, and I was just like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, look at how he turns into his... Look at how she turns into his her, mor- her morph ball. My God. <laughs> uh so she turns into Morph Ball. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then the camera fades out and all that. But why do I have to scan everything? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that annoyed the shit out of me. And it's probably going to annoy the shit out of me again this time. But it, it's just... I want to do it, man. I want to play through all of them. And I want to truly get the appreciation for all of them. Because I feel like 2 is probably better than 1. And 3 is probably better than 2. So if I can get through all three of them, by the time 4 comes out, which is more than likely because 4 doesn't even have a release date... Or any kind of gameplay footage, so I think I'm in the clear there. Uh, uh, that, that never stops Sony, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explain that to Kingdom Hearts 3 fans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's another trailer. We swear it's Kingdom Hearts 3 this time. <laughs> yeah, we've, 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 had, we've had a trailer since the announcement that actually showed like what the gameplay would look like, and we still haven't gotten the game almost five years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so... so you know, I'm kind of looking forward to Prime and all that because I'm just like, you know, I'm going to try it out and hopefully I'll like it and hopefully I'll, I'll enjoy the hell out of it and I have plenty of time to do that, so it's no big deal. Back to the story. <laughs> I did go to Reddit for verification that I'm not the only person that wanted a 2D Metroid. I found that verification and, and it was still very early on in the thread. The thread was only probably about 10-15 minutes old and someone was like, you know, this is great, I'm happy for you guys, but it's still not a 2D Metroid like I wanted. And that had like 20 upvotes or something like that. So obviously 19 other people agreed with that person, assuming no one disagreed with them and downvoting them. So uh, I added to it, made it 21, and I chimed in saying, yeah, you know, I kind of thought that the 4 would be uh, a sequel to Super Metroid, you know, but then Prime showed up, and I'm like, oh, that, that's kind of disappointing. But maybe maybe we'll get both, because wasn't there a rumor that they were working on two Metroid games? And someone chimes in and goes, well, Fusion was kind of Metroid 4. And I'm like, oh, I forgot about Fusion. Damn it. How could you? <laughs> You're right, how could I? Because Fusion was a great game, but it was just so, yes, it far, was. so far away from Super Metroid that it was just hard to remember that it was a direct sequel. And then, this game is so far away from any Metroid game that I was just grasping at anything to, you know, get a 2D Metroid. Uh, so I'm just kind of like, well, that sucks. There goes that hope. Well, maybe they'll announce something down the road, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, the magical comment appears that says, guys, click here. They just announced it. <laughs> So I, I fall for it, I click here, and at this point I'm almost anticipating a Rick Astley video. Uh, but instead, <laughs> <laughs> but instead uh, I was treated with a trailer for the 3DS, and I'm like, oh my god, it just dawned on me right then and there that Nintendo's entire presentation was strictly for the Switch, and they still have 3DS games to announce. So I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> this could be it. And I'm watching this trailer, still alone at work, and uh, eventually I, I start seeing Metroid, and I'm like, they did it, boys! It's here! <laughs> and I'm getting completely ignored. <laughs> Which is fine, <laughs> honestly. But it was just, it was it was awesome. It was just like, you know, they're showing it off, and I, I'm watching, I'm like, huh, this, this game kind of looks familiar. What are they doing with this? Like, is this a new one? Like, this doesn't look like it's a new one. What, what is this? This I hope this is a new one, because this doesn't look great for a new one. And then it dawned on me what it actually was. They're remaking Samus Returns, Metroid 2. Uh-huh. 
which is awesome because at first I was kind of like, oh god, is it just a port? But then I realized, no, this is a full-fledged new game. This is a reimagining of Man uh, Metroid 2, similar to how Zero Mission was a reimagining of Metroid 1. And my god, did they do a great job with that. So Yeah, they did. Zero Mission was incredible. I can only imagine that that Samus Returns is going to be just as good. And judging by what I've seen in the trailer, and then I found out they had a 45-minute video of demoing and gameplay, whew, watched every second and loved every second. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you, like, glued to your phone the entire time, too. Well, I didn't know that existed until I got home and uh, set up my computer later on that night. Like, this was last oh, okay. night that I seen all this. This is It's now Wednesday. This was Tuesday night that I seen all this. Uh, so Tuesday, yesterday, uh, as soon as I got done work, I had to go buy my computer chair. And then I had to come home and set up my computer desk that I just got delivered and my computer chair that I just bought. So that took me a couple of hours. Once I got everything, you know, set up and in the order I wanted to and got my computer set up and everything, it was kind of close to my bedtime, so I was just like, all right, well, let me see what's on YouTube or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Didn't have didn't have time for video games, but I had time to watch a couple things, so then I seen that and it was just, I was glued to my screen. <laughs> so that's, that's I, I'd imagine the entire time, too. Like, oh. probably had the the... Uh, inkling that you had to go to the bathroom, and you're like, nope, nope, you're in, you will wait. You will wait your turn. <laughs> even, Metroid came first. Even with a pause function. <laughs> <laughs> I will not pause. <laughs> I'm putting my dick in the drawer to my new desk, because I'm like, I need my dick to go in someone's mouth again. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> this time without the gut punch. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, unsavory. Um, <laughs> fantastic. But, uh, that being said, uh, you, you didn't have anything else from the E3 showing that like, excited you besides what Nintendo announced? Besides what Nintendo announced? Because I'm not done with Nintendo. <laughs> Holy shit, what else do you have? Well, at the end of, because I watched every second of it, at the end of the uh, presentation for, for Samus Returns, Metro 2, um, they started, and I'm so ashamed to say this, especially on the internet, let alone to a friend. They showed off two new Amiibos. <laughs> oh. Andy, I hate the concept of... I don't hate the concept of Amiibos. I'm sure they're great for people that enjoy that kind of stuff. And up until now, I never had a place to put such trinkets, and I never had a want for such trinkets, so I was just kind of like, eh. It's just a little figurine that you can get benefits out of. But now, it's a little figurine that I can get benefits out of for a Metroid game, and it's a little squishy Metroid, and and it's Samus in the Metroid 2 pose, and I can put them on my computer desk, and it'll look awesome. I have no idea what they even do yet, and I'm willing to drop 30 bucks on both of them. (laughs) Wow. You are a fan, sir. (laughs) I... I really like Metroid. I see that. Um, Huh. Okay, but aside from that, aside... Okay, let let me look... Let me look. I have E3 up right now. Not E3, but I have like some things from E3 up right now. Uh, okay, so I really enjoyed the new Spider-Man trailer for the PS4. That did look really good. I also really enjoyed some of the new stuff for uh, God of War, including the release date and all that. Um, the shitty thing about both of those things is they are exclusive to PlayStation, and I am not buying another console. <laughs> yeah, uh... Although, talking on Spider-Man, like, that outfit, pretty badass. Yeah, that outfit looks really cool. Uh, I, I gotta say, like, you know, Spider-Man's outfit is so good that it's stood the test of time since, like, the 40s, and virtually unchanged. Uh, they've done little tweaks here and there over the years on, in different mediums, but the tried-and-true Spider-Man outfit, the very original, has been good this entire time. Yeah. And, you know, to see that they, you know, mess with it, in that kind of way for the game, like, it still obviously pays homage to the original, but, like, it, it has so many different elements to it that's new versus being, like, a slight change here or there. And it works. It, like, it looks nice. Yeah. 
And, and the game itself actually looks like it borrows a decent amount of elements from Arkham games, which I think is funny. Uh, that, like, the Arkham Batman games were such the quintessential, this is how you be a superhero in a combat situation <laughs> kind of game, that every superhero is like, yeah, I want to be Batman. <laughs> like, of course you do. Because if you could be anything other than Batman, why bother? Like, if you can be Batman, just be Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. With Spider-Man, it does kind of work because he plays into the... He, well, he can play into the whole stealthy thing. He can play into yeah. the whole in-your-face combat thing, the gadgets thing. Like, it, it does work. And that's one thing I want to mention about the Spider-Man trailer. Um, I like the fact that they are bringing more gadgets to this game. Like, we always seen Spider-Man in its, in its core with the Spider-Sense mechanics and the web-swinging mechanics. Uh, even though they haven't been right since the second movie game. <laughs> right. Uh, you always see all kind of mechanics like that, the different fighting mechanics, and then there was a couple of them like Shattered Dimensions where they had all kind of different Spider-Men, and they all had different abilities and certain unique things that they did. But you never see too many gadgets in, the, in any of these games, if at all. Like, if you do, it's just something like a temporary power-up or something like that. But the fact that you actually... like, I, I've only seen the one, I might be wrong by saying it's the only one in there, but... This is the only one I've seen where he just kind of like threw that little uh, proximity, almost mine, on the wall, and somebody walked by it, and then he immediately just shoots a web out and grabs him and sticks him to the wall. I was like, oh, that's cool as shit. Yeah. So yeah, it's that like, is neat. It, it's that kind of thing that's just making me look at it and go, huh, I wonder if there's any kind of like RPG elements to it where you can, like in Batman, you can get like some sort of experience point system or something like that. You can level up. Your uh, or upgrade your uh, your power ups and your weapons and your your gear and all that stuff. You know that that can definitely make. I mean, at this point, you might as well just say, "Hey, look, we meet Batman Arkham. I mean, Spider Man Arkham. I mean, Spider Man." <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine because Batman was a great great game. Like the Arkham series was awesome. So put a different superhero in a situation, give him different gadgets, and hey. <laughs> yeah, look, it, it works. Mortal Kombat didn't come out with Street without Street Fighter coming out first. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, actually, a very good point there. <laughs> well said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider uh, uh, you know, can, can web swing off of Batman's dick any day. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> look, if it's, if it's any consolation, the first, what was it, Spider-Man for the, I know they made it for the Nintendo 64 and for the PlayStation 1. That game was great. I, I don't think it was called anything other than just Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, it was just Spider-Man. Even Spider-Man 2 and Electro. That wasn't bad. That was pretty cool. Um, and then they started making the movie games. The first one was eh. The second one, still to this day, possibly one of the best superhero games I've ever played in my life. Uh, and I have no problem saying that. That game, oh, my god, I spent so many hours just doing nothing but swinging around New York City. Because the web mechanics were so well done. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, that game was incredible. And then Spider-Man 3 was just something that I wish never happened. Video game, movie, everything. Just terrible all the way around. Yeah. Uh, but then they had other ones. They had Web of Shadows. They had Shadow Dimensions. They had, you know, all kinds of different games. And, and they were not exactly the greatest games in the world, but they were good. Now, let's look at Batman, okay? Let's look at Batman before Arkham Asylum. When was the last good Batman game prior to Arkham Asylum? The one on the NES. Exactly. <laughs> it took that long for them to get Batman right. Granted, they finally did get it right, and my god, did they get it right. Yeah. But you take that long to get a good Batman game, and there has been plenty of them, and they all sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, look, it, it, it might be the new standard for, for uh, superhero games, but... You know, he deserves it because it was a while before it was that. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. That, that is 100% true. But anyway, uh, I guess aside from Nintendo, uh, there was a couple So the, 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 the couple things from Sony. God of War, that was the other thing I mentioned. God of War looks really cool. Um, God, I want to I play that game so much, and I just know that I'm not going to because I refuse to buy another system. <laughs> Yeah, I I liked the God of War games. Uh, the ones I played, I never played three, but I don't think I'm missing much. Um, and uh, I kind of like the concept of this, and it's a different take on it, because like, beforehand you kind of got like the Devil May Cry kind of hack and slash kind of game. This is more of a, you know, over-the-shoulder, steady, purposeful 
you know, action adventure game. So it's nice to see that the series kind of like matures that way, you know. Kind of like the the type of combat where every strike is going to count. Yeah, like and it's a little bit more strategic than just a button masher, like you know. Dante's Inferno or something like that where it's just like you know oh hey can you rack up a cool meter hey nice you threw that guy up in the air and did a buzzsaw attack and then launched him to the ground and hit him in the face with this other dude good on you're like good good job I'm like uh no that's not this this time this is a bearded Kratos it's just like alright well I have a magical axe and now you're split in two anybody else want some like that yeah. okay that's fine yeah absolutely um there was another game that I kind of wish we got something for and we didn't uh God, I don't remember for life of me what it was called. It's the one that uh, Del Toro is doing, Guillermo Del Toro. Um, Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, God. What, all right, how about if I just type in Del Toro? Because <laughs> they, they, he's not doing Silent Hills anymore. That, that, that project no, died. No, it did, but there's a Death Stranding. That's it. Tell me you never uh, saw the trailers for Death Stranding. I did, but... Okay. Uh, God. Um, really? I even, yeah, I, I... Look, I get Hideo Kojima is weird. I get that. And I get that he is also a brilliant game designer. Not gonna argue that. But I'm gonna need more for a trailer than naked Norman Reedus coddling babies that dis, that, that evaporate. Like, I need more. <laughs> you did. You got Del Toro in a trailer. It was the complete mirror trailer of Del Toro's point of view. Still, like, I need to know something about the game. Yeah, I, I hear you. I do. Uh, the trailer looks magnificent. God, I hope it lives up to the hype, because just those two trailers alone, everyone was like, holy shit, this game looks cool as shit. No one knows anything about the game. It could be a freaking card game, for all we know. <laughs> he, he established tone and art direction, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Because a lot of times in a game, those are the two main things that I focus on. Like, they grab your attention right <laughs> out the gate. So I'm happy that he got that right. I just want to know what the rest of it is. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's fine. And I, that's what I'm saying. Though. I was kind of expecting to see something in E3 from that, and I didn't. So that was kind of sucky. But whatever. Aside from that, um, Beyond Good and Evil Two is happening. Yeah, I I never finished the first one. Um, I should. Like I legitimately after seeing the trailer, I wanted to go back to the other game and be like, man, I gotta finish that. I'll be honest with you, I've seen the game a number of times on GameStop shelves, and I was always like, you know, I should really get that game. I should trade in a couple games and check that out, because it looks good. Maybe next time. And it was just one, maybe next time's too many, and I never I never got around to playing it. And I looked at gameplay footage of it now, and it looks kind of dated. If you didn't play it originally, it, I don't think it's going to grab you now. Uh... Well, the, but, the best way to describe it is like Cyberpunk Ocarina of Time. Like, it has a very, like, the N64 Legend of Zelda <laughs> vibe to it. You're 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 describing it the wrong way <laughs> to me. <laughs> Unless Sorry. you don't want me to play it, don't get me started on Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Wind Waker. Oh, Wind Waker's great. Okay, then there you go. It's a it's a Wind Waker style in uh, with a uh, you know futuristic cyberpunk <laughs> uh, skin over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely see what it is, and it looks pretty neat. Uh, but I just, you know, I couldn't bring myself to play it now. I'm going to check out the second one, and if the second one looks cool, then maybe I'll play it. The, the first. Yeah, they definitely have a more like ultra realistic style to the second one. Yeah, which I liked. So, I I, I like again art direction and 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 what was the tone. Said? Tone, right? And and they they certainly gave that off in this trailer. So that grabbed me, and that's great. So if, if I see more and I like it, I might go back and play the first one. We'll see. Anyway, um, so there was that. Uh, here's something interesting. Crackdown 3 for Xbox. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Um, did you ever watch when Crackdown 3 was first announced, like three years ago? I did. So is it just me, or does the game visually look worse than when they first showed it? Okay, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even watch the trailer for it. Uh, I'm going to now. <laughs> yeah, the when when Crackdown Three was first announced, uh, the it looked gorgeous. Uh, everything looked kind of smooth, fluid. Um, you know, 
now the latest trailer that they showed off, it looked not clunky, but it the the style is so different. Like it doesn't look as good. Like it looks like the game has been on the shelf for like you know half a decade, uh, as opposed to like you know being like up and uh, up and and new with all the all the cool kids. I I, I don't know. Like it just it just seems like they they're they're not trying to build on it. They're just trying to finish what they already had. All I seen was Terry Crews was in the trailer, and it was... Oh, yeah, funny. he was hilarious. I'm sure he was. I mean, when is he not? <laughs> so I was just kind of <laughs> like, oh, my God, they're making a new Crackdown, and it has Terry Crews in it. Like, how <laughs> how can you not be excited about this? Uh, and it's on... It's an Xbox game. It's a, it's a Microsoft exclusive game, which means there's a good chance I'll be able to play it on my PC. <laughs> yep. So that's, that's something for me to be excited about. Um... I'm not really seeing gameplay footage of it. It's after Terry Crews does this whole thing. I see. Yeah, he's on there for a good while before oh, okay. it finally gets into. Oh, I see. It's cell shaded. Yeah. Has it? Was it always cell shaded? No. Well, maybe that's what's throwing you off then, because it's cell shaded now as opposed to it not being before. I totally see what you mean, though. I feel like they can do a better job with the cell shading. But, yeah, because I've seen good examples of that, and I'm just like, wow, I, that's a game that like it it does it looks worse than when it was first announced. Um, now I don't I played the original Crackdown, I skipped the second one, uh, so I'm not like the best person in the world to judge the game franchise. Uh, uh, I, I, if, did the, I did the same thing. Don't feel bad. Uh, so I mean, it's it should be all right. It's not on my to get list, but mm-hmm. you know, I recognize its importance for the, the console. Speaking of console, uh, what 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 did you think of the Xbox One X that they're calling it? Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back a notch because I'm not ready to quite get into that mood just yet. Because <laughs> my God, I can't wait. Um, the reason I, I I am kind of excited about Crackdown Three is because, like I said, it's an Xbox game, which means there's a chance I'll be able to play it on a PC, as opposed to. Uh, the Spider-Man and God of War games, which God of War probably never. Spider-Man, there's a chance maybe down the road if it gets enough sales, hey, let's port it to PC. Um, especially since there's not really such a thing as exclusives too much anymore, except for just original IPs, like Crackdown and God of War. Um, yeah. When you take something that's not original, like Spider-Man, and you have it quote-unquote exclusive to your console, it's not really exclusive, it's just it's exclusive for a couple months, and then they're like, hey, it's coming to PC and PS3, or hey, it's coming to Xbox 360 and PC, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Or, or uh, hey, it's it's not there yet, but eventually we're going to get it on the Xbox S, the Xbox One X, and the Xbox One 2, and the XX, Xbox One XXX. <laughs> what kind of name is that? <laughs> For real, what kind of name is that? Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of confused parents around the holiday season. As if they didn't take a page out of Nintendo's book and go, I know what we're going to do. We're, we're going to name it the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, because... but the difference... I was going to say, the difference there is that the Wii U is actually a different generation than the Wii. Like, the Xbox One X is still within this console generation. It's just a premium item. <laughs> and here's where here's where the similarity is. The amount of kids that want this are going to be the same amount of kids that wanted the Wii U. <laughs> hey, I got you that new console, the Wii U. Mom, I did not want this. Hey, I got you that new console, the Xbox One X. Mom, this is not a new console. <laughs> I said I wanted the Xbox One S, not the Xbox One X. Like, oh, well. <laughs> well, apparently. Yeah, that. And, and I said I wanted good health insurance, but I didn't get it, so we couldn't afford the braces, and it sounded like X to me, okay? <laughs> 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 uh, but I, I, I don't know. It, you know my opinion on this already. We've talked about this before. The whole, hey, let's come out with a new console, but it's not really new. Sony yeah. already did it. Xbox is trying to do it harder. It's just like, my God, I hope this doesn't become a trend because this is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Honestly, the one thing that's turning people off is like the price tag out the gate, where they're just like, you know, oh, it's four ninety nine for 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 this console, and people are like, what? That's way too much money. It's like, let's let's be completely honest. You are never gonna pay five hundred dollars for that because anybody. Okay, first of all, who is that console even for? 
they're for people that already have an Xbox One that just want a quote unquote better Xbox One. So what's the first thing you do? You turn in the damn system you already have. Which if you're going to go through GameStop, if it's just like any other console generation, any other iteration, or anything even like the PlayStation Pro, uh, PlayStation 4 Pro program that they had, uh, you can trade in your Xbox One for $120 credit to go towards the Xbox One X. So al- already it's $380, as long as you have a system already. So where people are like, oh, $500 is too much money to spend. It's like, you know what? You are absolutely right. It is too much to spend on a, on a cold turkey system. But you're not going to be spending that at all. There's going to be deals for it, like right out the gate. So what's your bitching? Second of all. Um, I'm going to stop you right there. What? Because I see the Xbox One X as some something completely different. I don't see it as someone that says, I have an Xbox One. Time to upgrade. I see it as someone that says, you know, I waited to get the Xbox One, and I was thinking about pulling the trigger on the S, and I'm glad I didn't because now there's the X. And I'll just get that. What do you mean $500? <laughs> so, and it's kind of like, well, I'm not going to go cheap on it and get the, the original one or the S because it's like, well, I know there's one better out there, and I know I'm going to eventually want that. And this should hold me over until they come out with the third iteration of the next-gen console. <laughs> Nah, because I tell you right now, those people don't exist. Like, that, that scenario absolutely works in that environment, but those, those people don't exist. No, those people totally exist. In my eyes, they what not. they should have done is they should have said, here's the Xbox One S and here's the Xbox One X simultaneously. The One S is the watered-down version of the Xbox One at a much cheaper price, and the Xbox One X is a much more beefy version of the Xbox One at a more expensive price. That's what they should have did. Kind of like what they did with the 360, with the Core and the, uh, whatever the hell is the Premium Edition or whatever? Uh, the Elite. Yeah, that's it, the Elite, the Core and the Elite Edition. That was a good idea because it, it gave something for both people at, at a fraction of a cost for coming out with two different consoles any other time. Because you're essentially making the same console twice. You're changing one part, which is the hard drive. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of brilliant. It's a hundred. It was like $100 difference between the two or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was. So that was good because like well, plus plus the elite had the built-in wireless Wi-Fi. Like... Right, 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 right. Uh, and, and to me, it was it was brilliant because it's like not everybody wants that. Not everybody wants an Xbox 360 to be a hardcore gamer. They didn't want uh, the the built-in Wi-Fi. They didn't want the extra storage space because they were like, you know, we're only going to play it for Call of Duty. <laughs> right. Or we're only going to play it for my kid to have his Elmo games or whatever it is. You know, it's it's. <laughs> It wasn't important for them to have a whole lot of hard drive space, so you know that that made sense. There's that consumer out there. Now you have the consumer that's like, we want an Xbox One so that we can watch our Blu-ray movies and we can watch our Netflix and pretty much have our, our, our a smart TV without owning a smart TV. Why not give us a watered-down version? Since they're so all about the whole, you know, it's not a gaming experience anymore. It's an entertainment experience. Well, give us something that doesn't play games. Why not? <laughs> you see uh, I mean, the the S the S is still a watered down version, and honestly, you can get those for two hundred fifty dollars. Like, is that what not the that S big is? Deal. The S is more watered down than the original. Well, no, it's just a smaller console. Like, it's a smaller console. It's um cheaper than just getting like. I mean, well, there is no such thing as the the traditional Xbox One anymore. Like, there was the first right. generation that came out, but the only consoles you can get now are the Xbox One S's which are the smaller console. It doesn't have a power brick, and it has a 4K Blu-ray d- uh, disk drive in it, but that's that's about it. Um, they do have one terabyte hard drives, whereas the Xbox One standard was 500 gigabyte, so it has more hard drive space for smaller console, and it has no power brick, which is amazing. Um, and like I said, the 4K Blu-ray, because the original Xbox One doesn't have that. Uh, and that's goes on, that sells for about 250 and then you have, you know, the Xbox One X, which is coming out this holiday season. That's a five hundred dollars system that has all the bells and whistles. So right. you have your options. You can either pick the two hundred fifty dollars system that it's just the just the system for whatever you want it for, and then you have the five hundred dollars system for you know, the Uber Premier Gamer system. Okay, that's not so bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one more thing about it. Sure. Um, why would they not? And and you can ha 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 me all you want. You can come to PC <laughs> Master Race. Look, man. That price is 100% justifiable with one thing that you put in there. Instead of going, look at all the teraflops we got. 
give us an SSD. Give us a solid state drive. Do not give us a hard drive. Give us a solid state drive. Do you have any idea how much sense it makes for a console to have a solid state drive? Yeah. No, you don't, because you don't know what it is. <laughs> no matter how many times I've explained it to you before. It pretty well, much I mean, eliminates loading screens. I mean, there's nothing more that needs something that goes, hey, let's make quicker loading times than a console. That's what they are. Console games have always been, you know, just burdened with loading screens. If you put an SSD into a console, you are winning whatever console war you have, because now you pretty much have no more loading screens. It might say loading, but it's just, you know, the loading screen... The time a loading screen will take with an SSD is the same amount of time it took you to open a treasure chest in Ocarina of Time. So, <laughs> clearly people didn't mind it. I think it would be brilliant. Yeah, uh, I, although, I mean, the X is water-cooled. And that's fine, but it has nothing to do with loading screens. No, but I'm saying, I mean, it's a console that's water-cooled. I thought that was neat. My console is water-cooled, too. And it has an SSD. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you, it has more teraflops. I don't even know what... It, teraflops aren't even important, but I guarantee you mine has more. <laughs> Fair, I suppose. Anyway, um... Yeah, I mean... I just, I just need to get back into gaming. I may I may end up getting the, uh, the X. I don't know. Um... Somebody's got a wedding to manage. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's the thing. That's the thing more than anything is that you know life comes first. I, life and wife both come first. I will take care of that, and then any kind of spillover I'll do later on on my own time. But you know, life and wife. <laughs> very, very uh, admirable of you because trust me, you're going to thank yourself later on. Because <laughs> if you don't, my God. Yeah. Um, hell, I was hath, actually... hell hath no fury, my good man. No, and you know it's funny. We actually play games together, so that's that's fine. Uh, if I invested in a console, but I I could not justify spending five hundred dollars on a console for us when I know damn well I'm spending five hundred dollars on a console for me. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I get that. So there's one last thing I want to touch on before we we go into clickbait news real quick, and and we have a little bit of time left before we have to do that. So I want to do, touch on it real quick. Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh boy! <laughs> Look, uh, if how many collector's editions does one person need? Before we get into that, I I kind of want to hype up the audience because I I'm sure there's people out there that listen to our podcast that like Assassin's Creed. Uh, I know one exists, <laughs> and uh-huh. he usually listens to every week. So I'm going to say this: there's a new Assassin's Creed coming out, and it happens to be taking place in Egypt. Now, that being yeah. said, because Andy knows who I'm talking about. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hi, Bill. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Miss <laughs> you. <laughs> he goes nuts over Assassin's Creed. He goes nuts over Egypt. We both have a, a friend that we know is probably going to be buying this game in some way, shape, or form. Now, the reason I say some way, shape, or form is because there are six different way, shapes, and forms. <laughs> <laughs> Assassin's Creed, for some reason, felt the need to come out with six different editions of Assassin's Creed Origins. Why? I don't know. Uh, What makes matters worse is the most that you get out of one of these editions is called the Donald... Okay, so I'm going to go over the names of them real quick. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but there's a standard edition. There's a standard edition, Assassin's Creed Origins. There's a deluxe edition. Assassin's Creed Origins Deluxe Edition. Then there's the Assassin's Creed Origins Gold Edition. And there's the Assassin's Creed Origins Gods Edition. And then there's the Assassin's Creed Origins Dawn of the Creed Editions. And then finally, there's the Assassin's Creed Origins Dawn of the Creed Edition. Legendary. What? (laughs) Not only are the names stupid... The yep. most expensive one, you know, the Dawn of the Creed edition, legendary, is eight hundred dollars. Why? <laughs> Where do you get off? Because it's as good as ten games. <laughs> no, it's not. You're right. It really isn't. 
first of all, uh, and, and, and I'm sorry, Bill, <laughs> but <laughs> Prince of Persia was the way better Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold on, which one? Because... Okay, not the remake. We both know not okay. the remake. But take any <laughs> one out of the, of the original... Well, not the original trilogy, but the uh, the, the recent trilogy, and, and there you go. Take your pick. Throw, throw a dart at a dartboard. I mean, Christ, even the remake might be better than some of the Assassin's Creed's. <sighs> Alright, you're right, it's not. But anyway, <laughs> so... In case anyone's interested, um, here's what comes in the $800 edition of Assassin's Creed Origins. You get the full game. Oh, that's good. Uh, you get oh, yeah. the, the deluxe packs, which I, I don't know what that is. Probably something cosmetic, I'm sure. Maybe a couple of extra items in-game. You start uh, off with like a certain weapons or armor or something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Which, I, I'm not going to lie, I've gotten that in games before. I've never paid extra for it. I'll like reserve a game, which I won't do anymore for obvious reasons, but... I'll reserve a game and, and you'll get that stuff in the beginning or whatever. Whatever, it's not important. Anyway, so you get that. Uh, you get the season pass. That's that's good. So what you're telling me is I'm paying for a DLC that you already have and just aren't willing to give me yet. Okay. <laughs> I have a problem with season passes on, on the date of the release. But anyway, uh, the world physical map. So you get a physical world map. That's kind of cool. Uh, you get the game's official soundtrack. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you get the game's art book. I mean, I guess if you're into that kind of thing, you get a uh, Bayex Eagle Skull amulet. I'm sure that's something uh, that that people would enjoy if they're into that kind of stuff. Uh, but you don't get the regular one; you get the one that's in resin, whatever that means. Uh -huh. uh, you get two original art cards, only two. You get a steel book, whatever that is. You get four large lithographs. Uh, you don't get that statue. You don't get that statue. You get this one. Numbered Bayek and Senu figurine in resin, which is 73 centimeters. So there's there's three things that come with other editions that you don't get in an $800 edition of this game. And that just, to me, makes no goddamn sense. Like, I don't care if it's the same statue or the same thing, but it's not as shiny or it's not as big. Give them to me anyway. I'm paying $800. You should give me everything that this game has to offer. Yeah, uh, everything the game has to offer. And um, the Steelbook, by the way, is uh, is just uh, the case. Instead of being a plastic case that the game comes oh, in, God. it's a steel case. So there's a new guy I work with. He's, he's a younger kid. Every summer, we always uh, hire, like, you know, 16, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, whatever, to work for us during the summer before they go off to college or before they start the senior year of high school or whatever. It always just works out because we only need them for the summer, which is our really busy time, the opening of the Jersey Shore, all that. The point I'm getting at here is I was talking to him the other day, and being that he's younger and he's a fan of sports games and all that, he was telling me that um, he bought the... Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. edition of the latest MLB game. Now that probably means nothing to you, but Ken Griffey Jr. was one hell of a player. I liked him a lot growing up and all that. So that's cool that he's, you know, acknowledging the fact that this player is a damn legend. Uh, he paid $100 for it, and I was like, what did the game come with? It should... I don't even think $60 is right to charge for a game, but whatever. Right. So he's saying, oh, well, it came with uh, the, the steel case... Like, oh, that's cool. Do you use it? No. All right. <laughs> it came with, like, I don't know, something else that you physically have or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Did you did you look at it or use it or anything? No. All right. came with a hat, a baseball hat. I'm like, well, do you wear it? Yeah, I wear it. Oh, okay. You got that going for you. I mean, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, and then it came with, like, extra points that you could spend online for better players on your team and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, so you basically paid to win. Uh -huh. That is so ridiculous, and it doesn't matter because I'm arguing with him. I'm telling him every reason why this is terrible, and he's just like, I'm not going to lie. Everything you're saying makes perfect sense, but I'm still not regretting my decision. And I'm just like, and you know what? That's the worst part because you are the youth and I am the elder. Therefore, whatever you say is going to affect me for the next however long I live for. <laughs> uh Right? Ugh. Tell me that doesn't suck. <laughs> I tell you what, there's only ever been one collector's edition I regret not picking up, and that's it. 
Uh, it was the um, collector's edition for Fallout th- uh, Fallout New Vegas. Mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed that one because it came it came with like poker chips, uh, came with like special coins. Uh, I think yeah. there was like two metal coins that came in with it. Yeah. There was a special uh, pouch thing that honestly I would have probably put dice in it. Um, I still would have used it. Um, uh, steel book and um, there's like a little like uh, Fallout comic book or something like that based off of the uh, the delivery guy that's the main character of the story. Yeah. And I'm like, alright, see that? All those things I would use because at the time I was actually playing like poker at, at somebody's place on a regular basis so I would have used the poker chips. I think one of I would have used the pouch. I was going to say, I think one of the chips was actually a USB uh, uh, flash drive, which was... What it oh, was yeah, that too, yes. Absolutely. Um, and it's one of those collector's editions that I thought I, I thought to myself, I was like, nah, I don't need to get the collector's edition. And then l- looking back on it, I'm like, man, I wish I got that one, because like, I've bought collector's editions since then and regretted them. <laughs> I, uh, I remember seeing that collector's edition, and I remember going, wow, that's kind of cool. Wish I had the extra money for it. And I didn't, but... I don't really regret it. I mean, I can see what you're talking about. They are certainly all useful. I enjoy poker, uh, and I do, you know, I I like to occasionally play. Not as often as I like to, but I I do like to play. Uh, USB drive would have been cool. Like, all that stuff would have been cool, like you said, but it's just, I don't know, man. It's hard to justify an extra $40 or or $30, however much it is, just for a couple of little knickknacks and stuff like that. It's just, I don't get it. Like, I I was even kind of upset that when Fallout 4 was announced... Uh, the special edition, collector's edition, whatever you want to call it, was also announced, which came with a pit boy that you can wear on your arm, and you can use the yeah. the, the Fallout 4 app and put it put your s- smartphone into the pit boy and pretty much have your very own pit boy. I was like, oh my god, that's the coolest thing ever! I need it so bad, and it was sold out. Obviously, immediately yeah. it was sold out, and those things were selling for like a thousand dollars on eBay. I'm like, okay, don't need one that much. <laughs> yeah, right. And looking back, I, th- I thought it, the same thing. Looking back at it, I'm like, I'm kind of glad that did sell out because I didn't even invest that much time as I thought I was going to into this game, so it's fine. <laughs> you know, but... So that's that's one that, that I... It was a near miss for me because if that thing wasn't sold out, I probably would have bought it and I probably would have regretted it. So I'm glad it didn't happen. That being said, I can't talk too much shit because before it is even released about what they do, I am already looking forward to purchasing both of the Amiibos for the new <laughs> Metroid game. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Uh, you have an illness. Uh, have, we, have we talked enough about video games? I would say so, certainly. Because um, so I could have kept going. I, I can too, but we are just about at an hour. We're about three minutes before an hour, so we're, we're going to go ahead and say we're done uh, and get into clickbait news, everyone. Oh, clickbait news! How I missed you. Right? Like I feel like we all missed it a little bit. Um, no, no, I just I missed you. I missed oh, you. Me? Yeah, you missed okay. you. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I have a question for you, Andy. Okay. Do you want me to go with the story that I have been saving for a couple weeks? Uh, the Florida story, or the story that I'm pretty sure is what is going to inspire the name of this episode. Oh, that's a hell of a lineup. Right? <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay. I say Florida first, uh, inspirational second, and the one you've been saving for third. Awesome. Florida first. Okay, I need you... <laughs> to tell me what the man named Trigger did at the Dollar General in Tampa Bay. Or Hudson, excuse me. His name was Trigger. His name is Trigger. Uh, I mean, the obvious thing is that he shot somebody. But I don't go with the obvious because it's clickbait. So let's go with he... He urinated on them. Okay. Man named Trigger accidentally shoots himself in the ankle at the Dollar General. Oh, never mind. (laughs) I mean, you're right. He didn't just shoot someone. He shot himself. Ah, I should have known. 
I should have known. <laughs> so, uh, a man left the Dollar General store with a gunshot wound Sunday after he was accidentally shot by his own firearm. Jason Trigger, 35, of Port Richley, entered the discount store off US-19 in Hudson about 3.30 p.m. to pick up boxes for a friend. Uh, tucked against his right hip was a .25 caliber handgun that, as Trigger walked into the building, came loose. When it hit the floor, it fired around into his right ankle, according to a Pasco County Sheriff's Office news release. Trigger left a firearm on the floor and limped towards a Buick uh, in the parking lot with two other people, according to Sheriff's Office, according to the Sheriff's Office investigation report. Uh, he then went to the Regional Medical Center, Bayonet Point, where he was... <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Where he was contacted, <laughs> where he was contacted by deputies. As of Monday, he was still recovering. The sheriff's office said Trigger has several past felony arrests in Pasco, dating back to 2009. After Sunday's incident, he now faces a charge of possessing a firearm as a felon. I was going to say, like, wait a minute, how did he have a gun if he's a felon? But there you go, right. he's getting a charge for it. What a dumbass! So not only, not only did he shoot himself in the ankle, but he did it with a gun that he was unlawfully possessing. Never yeah, changed. never changed, Florida. <laughs> no, never. And you know what? Like, it goes to show you that, like, you think, you think that you need to have a gun on you for protection. You need to think you have it on it on you to be like, you know, intimidating to other people or what have you. But at the end of the day, you are your own worst enemy. <laughs> you want to see a picture of a guy? And you'll never prepare for you. Yes. Of course you do, right? <laughs> there he is in all of his glory. What the hell? <laughs> what? He... Okay, you ever seen that CGI movie Dinosaur? No. Ugh. Okay. Damn it. This comparison's lost on you then, because he looks like the freaking dinosaur from the movie Dinosaur. <laughs> he looks like a dinosaur. I don't think that comparison's lost on me after all, Andy. <laughs> savvy with guns as most other people, but um, wouldn't you have to have a round in the chamber to have it go off if it jars a little bit? Like, Well, I'm going to guess that since it was on... I don't know 100%. I'm not a savvy neither. But I'm going to guess he threw caution into the wind since he was already unlawfully possessing this firearm to begin with. So, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, got, you got it right. Man, I wonder where the gun went after it was separated from the person that shot. You know, probably lonely somewhere, sitting in, like, lockup. Like, the gun didn't do anything wrong. It actually helped by getting this guy off the streets. Like, that gun is a hero, and it's going to just rot in, a, in, a, in an evidence locker for, like, months on end. Poor little guy. I know people probably aren't the biggest rap fans in the world that listen to this podcast. Maybe they are. Who knows? But there is a song by Nas called I Gave You Power, where it is him telling the story of what happens to him as a gun. Where he's just, he's a gun and someone's using him, you know, to, to, to kill and he hates it. And uh, eventually the outcome of the song is the gun has this idea that he's going to make himself jam. He's just going to hold on and not fire the bullet when his owner shoots. Uh, uh -huh. And naturally it happens and the guy that he was going to shoot. Uh, pulled out a gun himself, and he's like, a much newer version of me, uh, and he's just like, and you know, he killed me, and then I hit the ground, and I felt the blood pour onto me, and everything like that, and it's just so descriptive and amazing, and then he's just like, you know, I hear people screaming and running, and now I'm happy, because I'm finally alone, until I felt somebody else grab me, <laughs> and that's the end of the song, it's just, it's incredible, that that just reminded me of that when you said that, that's all, listen to that song, people. Uh -huh. I Gave You Power by Nas, incredible. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. So, right. you have the title-inspired episode next, yeah? Or, or yeah. our story, rather, not episode. <laughs> um, okay. Whew. So, in Rhode Island, a lawmaker hands out a document. And what is on that document? A lawmaker hands out the document. Yes. Um. Oh, oh, oh! It is 
Uh, it is permission for people to marry inanimate objects. I never said it was a law. <laughs> um, lawmaker mistakenly hands out document with porn references on it. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Pro Providence, Rhode Island. A Rhode Island lawmaker is acknowledging that he mistakenly gave his colleagues a handout that showed open web browser tabs referencing pornographic content. State Representative Ramon Perez, or no, that might be State Republican, I don't know. Uh, Ramon Perez brought printouts of a Wikipedia article, this is how much I know about politics, I see State REP and I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> brought, state, state Representative. Yeah, it's, okay. Brought uh, printouts of a Wikipedia article Wednesday to give to House Finance Committee members as a part of his testimony in favor of a bill. Uh, the screenshot reportedly showed multiple open browser tabs with titles referencing pornographic material. No images could be seen. Uh, a House spokesman confirmed Perez gave the document to the clerk who made copies and distributed them. The clerk collected the handouts from members when the tabs were discovered. Uh, Perez submitted a new handout the next day. And here's the best part. <laughs> okay. Perez says the incident was, quote, a mistake, and he says the handout was provided to him by a friend who he asked to research the information. So, <laughs> even as a politician, we still refuse to say, yeah, that's me, my bad, guys. I, I like big titties, and I cannot lie. Instead, he was like, nah, man, that, that was totally my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Especially depending on what was on those tabs. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it could have been anything. Yeah, like, oh, man. You probably got, like, uh, mudslide slopes or uh, freaking um, uh, the the bukkake jockeys or... <laughs> what are mudslide slopes? Do I want to know? Oh, oh it's, it's when you essentially do diarrhea on a woman's chest. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, or water sports. Uh, you could. Um, you, you could do, like, you know, goldenshowers.com. Like, there, there's a lot of, like, screwed up crap that you can do with that. Um, but the idea is, it's like, you know, oh, yeah, I think, uh, I think you'll find this information useful for this bill. And, you know, they go to look at it and they go, hmm, the DP in me. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's totally useful. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am – I'm typing out several different titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to go to the last story, okay? Uh -huh. All right. So this is the this is the big one. This is the one that I've been saving for a little bit here. Uh, cracks me up still to this day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, why is the female lawyer uh, – uh, okay. Why is the dwarf prosecutor suing a man that she called as a witness in her court case? I'm, I'm just imagining it in my head, and I don't know what it is, man. Like, I don't think you can technically be racist against midgets, <laughs> but... <laughs> um... It's just hilarious to me. Um, because he kept making short jokes? <laughs> Female lawyer who stands just three foot eight inches in court sues witness who laughed hysterically at her and started singing Hi Ho. <laughs> <laughs> This is her witness. She calls the dude in as a witness, and as soon as he goes up, he breaks down laughing right in the middle of court at her size and starts singing the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs song. Oh my god. It still makes me laugh. I've had this story for like two or three weeks, and I've been dying to get it on clickbait news. Oh my god. Like, where did this even take place? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do this right now. So, um a dwarf prosecutor is suing a man she called as a witness 
in a court case after he broke down laughing in court at her size. I am not even going to attempt the name because it is all kind of German. Uh, but she was 39, and uh, I think the last name is Backofen. So we'll say Backofen. You know what? We're going to try it together. So it's S I L K E. That's the first name. So like Silky? Silk? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the last name is S C H O E N F L E I S C H dash B A C K O F E N. Right. So Silk the Shocker, 39, is a <laughs> little, <laughs> little lady with a big name and an even greater sense of right and wrong. She may only stand three foot eight inches, but Miss Shocker uh, punches well above her legal weight, as many villains in Frankfurt have found to their cost. So apparently, it's in Frankfurt. Uh, no, this is like a, a Russian, probably maybe either Russia or Germany. Uh, so it says so. So when Russian German Vadim Golanov. 25, cracked up in hysterics at the dwarf lady, quote-unquote, in court during a case about theft, she was decidedly unimpressed. Uh, he was unable to answer her questions due to his hysterical laughing, pointing at her and singing hi-ho, hi-ho from the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. No one else joined in. <laughs> well, shame on them. <laughs> right? That's a perfect opportunity. I mean, he's going to be the one that gets in trouble. You might as well get a couple jabs in. Uh, no one else joined in, and before he left the witness box, he was handed a hastily scrawled summons accusing him of obscene insults and ordered to appear before a judge next month. Uh, in legal circles, Miss Shocker has the nickname Power Frau, which means mighty woman. <laughs> what? <laughs> I imagine she's going to take him to small claims court. <laughs> So when we're done here, I actually have several pictures of her. I can't wait to show you. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm holding back laughter while reading this and seeing the pictures at the same time with you guys. <gasps> small claims court business. <laughs> <laughs> so she decided to become a lawyer after failing to get into medical. How long is this? Okay, yeah. So you get the idea. I don't need to go on about this. No, not at all. My God, because it goes on and on and on. Like, this is how great she is. And look at all these pictures of her. Nobody gives a shit. She I, got... I, I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, she's she's accomplished if she's, like, you know, vertically challenged. Okay. Here we are. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, here we are. There's one picture of her. Here's okay. another picture of her. And here's an okay. Here's an adorable picture of her reading books. Oh man, it's like she's people. <laughs> <laughs> she looks much better in the other photos. Like, no, you I know, like that one the best. <laughs> that that one, one is the best. That one just says, "Please make fun of me." Like, <laughs> that oh, one. Man. That one looks like what happens when you dress up a uh, a wiener dog as like an ambulance or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. <laughs> isn't it true that you were at the corner store of. What? what what's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So that's the one I've been saving for a couple weeks. Rightfully oh, so, I think. You're right, rightfully so. Oh man. Um. God, where do I even begin with this? Because, like, it is, it is freaking hilarious. Uh. I don't know if I would be singing in court, <laughs> for that, but I I would not be able to hold back making puns. Like, you know, uh, you know, do do you know my client? You know, like oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a small exchange here and there. I don't want to get into the tiny <laughs> details about it, but you know. Yeah, even at the height of our friendship. Uh, <laughs> oh god. I would say that little was known about each other. She's a great dancer, though. While I only have, <laughs> you know, I only have two left feet. You'd swear she has three feet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. You are just adorable. When is your mother going to start cross-examining me? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's probably the best one right there. Oh god. All right. Your Honor, permission to, to approach the bench. I'll get the ladder. <laughs> oh god. What, what, what the hell just said that? Oh, it's you again. <laughs> so it's like, oh, oh, okay. I thought this was going to be an open and shut case. <laughs> Oh god, is she stuck in the fan again? Can somebody get the stick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she carries her briefcase because it's got like you know it's it's on the wheels because she can't actually lift it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The the handle for the briefcase is a miniature ladder, so she can get places that she needs to go. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah, I got it for days. My wife is 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 incredibly short, so I keep going about short jokes all day. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I have oh. three different names, and none of them are short people related, which I'm kind of upsetting. Kind of no, upsetting that's myself fine. with, but yeah. Okay, so I have <laughs> all of them back dating back. I think this one's pretty good. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not mine. <laughs> and finally, okay. hand job handouts. Hand job handouts. Um, I was gonna say DP at E3. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <sighs> I guess it could be. We did talk a lot about E3. <laughs> oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> but that's not going to get people to listen to the episode, Andy. <laughs> no, although <laughs> throw some porn references in there. Right, handjob handouts. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you remember Sexy Ninja Fish? <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> I'm bringing Shorty back. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty, you the best. <laughs> you the you the best. No. Um, God, can we put games in there somewhere? Sh- sh- shorty games. Shorty games. I still want to include the games, but I don't want to make it sound like too nerdy. How would you spell shorty if if the nerd voice was saying it? I guess it wouldn't be too I, different. I, honestly, I would I would put the S H A W T Y. The shorty <laughs> games. <laughs> if we can make it sound like that, that'd be great. <laughs> it's the shoddy games. Petite paperback? Petite paperback. Paltry pamphlets? Mm. Okay. Undersized and underrated. Oh, I can totally get behind that one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely undersized and underrated. All right. <laughs> so, finally, that'll do it for this week's edition. <laughs> Of the Size Splitters, episode 41, correct? 41, yes. Undersized and underrated. My name is Lyle. And I am incorrigibly Andy. <laughs> See you guys next week, we promise. <laughs> yeah, we pro- we, we'll, be, we'll be here. One step closer to episode 50. See you guys then. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>